Hey everybody, it's Angel from Halo Inspirations. We give you inspirations to help you spread beauty and joy through your quilting journey. Happy hump day. Whoop, whoop. Happy Wednesday to each and every single one of you. Hey, today is another crazy quilt kind of thing. So here are some of my eight and a halfs. They're not straight <laughs> and they're not yet where I'm necessarily going to put them. Um, I just kind of put some up there and allowed you to see how we're progressing here at least for me um i have seen some of y'all's and it's super cool but <clears throat> you know when we're building these eight and a halfs we're getting a lot of scrappies okay some of them some of them are are pretty tiny um they get they get kind of small right so i'm going to take one step further and I'm definitely going to use smaller blocks that I can, in fact, incorporate inside this quilt if I so choose to do so. So that will help eliminate some of these itty bitties. It's almost the same as making the big ones. There's just one, two small little differences. And one would be the size of the block. And I talk about that, unfortunately, not right at the beginning, but during the clip. So stay tuned. We're going to go ahead and get some itty bitties done. So I'll see you guys in just a sec. Okay, as you continue to build, you get all kinds of scraplies. <laughs> so this was an idea and it's more of crumb piecing. The one thing that I appreciate about this is that all of this fabric is in all of those larger blocks so it kind of ties things in and I'm I'm still not wasting so I picked up a, um, a piece I didn't trim it or nothing I probably should press it a little bit and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this thing started now there's going to be many different shapes so you don't have the same straight line ish thing going on you have stuff that is very different I mean triangles there are a lot of triangles in here and it you know it's all about experimenting still and having a lot of fun with your creativity so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to there's a little area right here that doesn't look like you know I'm not gonna try and sew on that so I'm just gonna build it from this and I'll have a little bit inside the seam and I'm okay with that so what I'm going to do <clears throat> is I'm going to go ahead and stitch from here down okay so just like before I went ahead and stitched a quarter in well, about a quarter inch line it is straight and we are going to press this open okay and I'll do that here in a second I'm going to go ahead and clip the ends okay and you see this angle I'm gonna press it here in a second this angle goes different it's gonna go I'm gonna shave off part of that I went ahead and pressed it okay so I'm just eyeballing we ain't got to get crazy yeah that wasn't a great eyeball but that's okay now these are way too small I am NOT dealing with those okay so now we find another piece. I think I'll do the green. Now you're going to have many pieces like this because they were on the ends. So I'm just going to shave it clean. And I'll come back to that one. Cause, oh no, we're going to do that one next because we're going to still go around and around just like before. Okay. So you just, when you're doing this, you just need to make sure when you're doing it that you're finding a piece that is in fact long enough. Okay. That's probably the most important part I'm just gonna line them up and now notice this isn't completely straight right I mean I could go a little crazy here and go in a little further and then I would have to contend with this angle I don't know we can do that hey okay. there's no rhyme or reason it's just whatever fits so I'm gonna go ahead and do that one so I went ahead and stitched that down, okay, and this will be our next angle. So we could eyeball it <laughs> or, you know, however you're finding your cutting method, that's for sure. All right. Now that that's still big enough to use. Look, that eyeball was terrible. 
It's terrible. Okay. So one other thing I've been starting to do, I have been starting to use my rotary cutter, making sure that all that fabric is out of the way. These little pieces, I, I could hide it in the seam. You don't have to be so persnickety. Um, and let me tell you, I've almost cut the foundation before. All right, that's going in the trash. So I'm actually going to shorten this up just a bit. There we go. All right, why? I don't know. I could have left it because these are tiny pieces, right? <laughs> okay, so let's find another one. And like I said, basically the idea is that you're just finding a piece that will, in fact, go all the way across what you're building. Okay. And once you have that, you just keep going around and around. And this one's not actually that straight. So let's flip, let's flip it around and see if that works better. Yeah, I like it a little better. Okay. Let me go ahead and sew this and press. All right. There she is. <clears throat> so here's our next angle. I'm going to get rid of the foundation underneath and use a ruler. I find it to go a little faster than hand sometimes. Sometimes it's, I don't know. I don't know why, what one reason is according to the other, but sometimes I find it to be a little faster, sometimes not so much. Okay, so that's going in the trash. We got another piece on. And it's just basically the same, except, okay, we'll, we'll do a triangle before I speed the video up. So I'm going to put this triangle on. I think it'll fit, right? Yep, and I'll sew this down and press and come back at you. <clears throat> okay, so she's pressed and, or sewn and pressed. So now we're going to clean her up a little bit. I'm going to... Um, trying to decide what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and clean this end up just a little. Now, one of the things before I, another thing before I start, you know, going nuts with speeding up the video. Um, one of the things I did learn, remember I was showing you how my particular fabric that I'm using as a foundation tends to shrink a lot. This is a four and a half inch square. I guess I could have told you all that from the beginning. So this is a four and a half inch square. Half, if we sell two of these together, okay, that gives you eight and a half inch by four and a half. Now, you know, the other ones that I'm building are eight and a half. So it, I could put two of them together theoretically, okay, and I can put them in between two eight inch blocks or I can sew four of them together, right? And it should build an eight and a half inch block. But what, remember, if you remember, I'm, I'm shrinking in this fabric. Okay. It's very thin. And I did find that it shrunk a lot. My tip would actually be, if you're experiencing that to start with a five inch square and just make sure you don't have seams that are going to be cut off or, you know, are going to be exposed in a way that you don't want. Okay, because of course we're cutting seams. I mean, that was not the most clearest thing, but you want to make sure that you don't have something open, um, be you know, that, that you're going to cut and then it, it won't hold. So I would highly suggest that. Also, what you could do is you could do five inch squares. If you thought you were going to sew all four of them together, don't cut them down, leave them at five inches, trim them at five, sew them all together, and then trim that master block uh, as eight and a half inches using the center um, as your point of reference in the center of eight and a half would be four and a quarter. So put the four and a quarter mark on here and cut it to eight and a half. That's another option. Or so two fives together. Okay. And then when you go to cut it down to eight and a half, do it after you sew them down and again, it would be four and a quarter is your middle. And you could use this point at four and a quarter to make sure you're getting those two sides. To be honest, it wouldn't even matter if they were equal or not. Because the whole point is this is crazy quilting. Just as long as that you can match them with the larger blocks. Okay. So I'm going to keep going. I'm going to speed this video up. And um, 
we do have this triangle so you'll see uh, later how I contend with it or as I build um, how it gets contended with so we will see you here at, when it's a finished block So it looks like it's done, but I misjudged and there's a little piece of foundation sticking out over here. So it's all good. I'm just going to sew this piece straight down. Okay. And then it will be, I'm pulling it in a little bit from the uh, quarter inch. Matter of fact, I'll go in a little bit further um, because that way um, I'm not going to disturb it whenever I go to cut my four and a half inch square and it won't be too bothersome in, in the, um, uh, the new, the quarter inch seam when I sew them together, cause that wouldn't be fun. Right? So I'm going a little beyond that and I'll just stitch this down and you'll get to see what that looks like. I'm just going to go ahead and cut me a piece off here. There we go. Okay, so I've got her sewn on. And I'm going to flip this over. I apologize for my dogs. I don't know what it is today, but they are just super crazy. Now, remember mine did... Oh, look, see, it gathered up a little bit in that area. But it's actually um, not too bad. But I am going to be sure to cut to four and a half. Give it a turn. Okay. See it shrank about an eighth of an inch under there. Yeah, so like I said, this would be better if it was done on a five inch square. Like lessons learned, right? I've never done crumb piecing basically on a four and a half I've on foundation. So this was a an this was an experiment that I absolutely enjoy. I think it's fantabulous. You will see here in a second just how far we've gotten. I've got one little sliver I'm going to have to cut off on one side, but I'll do that off camera. There we go. Now these are still usable. This one we got a little cray cray. It's a little too small, so that goes in the trash. Um, this one I'll go ahead and throw in the trash, but this one I will, but I'll keep the bigger ones if anything does come to be that's big enough to use. All right, let me go ahead and flip it over. And there she is. Now, to remove some of this bulk, I very well could remove some of this extra fabric, but I'll probably just end up um, not doing that and holding on to it, which then is going to create more bulk, which means my quarter inch seam is going to be a little different. What I might end up doing is even putting tacking on just a couple drops of um, Roxanne's glue in there and setting it so they know it, it will stay. Uh, but yeah, there she is. And look how fun that is. Look at all that craziness. Absolutely love this. And this will tie in with the rest of the quilt, like I said, because all these fabrics are utilized in all the other um, blocks. And I'll ha I have another one over here. So there we have it. Very cool, right? I'm going to turn the light up for a second. Okay. Yeah, so I will continue to grab these tiny pieces. Like this would make a really great center for another four and a half inch block. I think that's a lot of fun. So 
this is another option uh, remember this is your quilt you are the boss you get to do what you, there ain't no quilt police here today or any day so this is all up to you whether or not you'd like to venture in this um wonderful place you could also do because it is um i have done crumb piecing on another video um and i'll put a link in the video for you but you could actually just crumb piece and cut out four and a half inch squares when you're done uh, building crumb piecing and put that also with your um, eight and a half inch squares and you could just simply fuse it onto some you know onto um, uh, the background the foundation so that it it at least has that and maybe do a couple stitches to tack it in so that it has the same depth but at any rate that's the four and a half. I'll be right back. I'll see you in just a sec. Looky there! Aren't they so cute? This was absolutely a lot of fun. Now, like I've said, I've crumb pieced a million things, but I've never done little small blocks quite like this or crumb piecing on foundation. It was definitely fun. It was definitely different. And I'm going to continue with it. Like I said, I have some shrinkage going on, but I think I can work that out within... Uh, because I've already cut all my blocks, okay? So I can't go back and add to five inches <laughs> or I would have done that. I, I totally would have done that and then cut them down. Um, but because of that, I, I'm going to I'm gonna make it work. Y'all are going to see. We'll, we'll be doing this again. We ain't done, obviously. I don't have a quilt yet. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you at least found this inspirational. And if you're doing them, would love, love, love to see what your blocks look like and allow me to share them. Oh, next week, which we will be doing a chair of chit chat. So um, we'll be, I'll be gathering all of the uh, pictures and such and, and talking to the people who have shared different things with me to see if I can share them next week. So yes, share, share, share away with me. You can share them inside the private Facebook group, Creative Kingdom. If you are a member in there uh, which we welcome anyone as long as you answer those three questions you can share them by email you can share them by Facebook Messenger um, any way that uh, you feel comfortable sharing that would love 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 to see your work and I'm sure the rest of the cherubs inside the halo community would also love to see and get some inspiration from you so look forward to next week but you all know I'm gonna be on today live at 3 p.m. Eastern Time as I'm in here in Virginia. So we will be live at 3 p.m. Eastern Time for a live quilting and answer session, live Q&A, all about these crazy quilts. So look forward to seeing you all then. But if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Yay, yay. Go ahead and share it with a friend. And don't forget to hit subscribe. And once you hit the subscribe to know that you will get a notification the next time we upload another video make sure you hit the bell ting and if it's important that you click usually I do all because if once you if you don't click all inside that notification sometimes you don't get notified and it's very frustrating because you're like wow man that person hasn't been on in a while oh we have I have they have we dismiss them because we don't have that right setting so hit that notification bell and hit the all button and you will be sure to know when we come live but i will be live next week for cherub chit chat time look forward to that look forward today at 3 p.m yeah and let's have some crazy fun with this crazy quilt and until next time may you continue to be inspired productive ever so joyful never stop believing and never stop making your dreams in quilting come true i love y'all Happy quilting. Happy Wednesday. Whoop, whoop. See y'all soon. <laughs>